Compulsive hoarding is a, a mental health issue that affects some four to five out of every th a thousand Americans, although researchers su suspect that that number is actually on the low side. When we think about someone having this problem, we think that in terms of four factors. One is excessive acquisition. Individuals with this problem acquire large amounts of possessions. Um, they shop at yard sales and bring all manner of this and that home. They shop at big box stores and buy extras, so you can go into their home and find stack after stack of paper towel or toilet paper or diet sodas. Um, so, and after a while, because of that compulsive acquisition, the living spaces become highly cluttered. In addition, they can often and often do shop on the internet um, and buy packages that they never really open. A second factor that suggests that maybe someone has this problem is the difficulty they have discarding. While people who hoard save the same things we do, they often have trouble discarding things, many times that we think are of limited value or usefulness. For example, many times you'll go into their homes and you'll see um, uh, newspapers that are three or four years old, or a half-eaten donut or carrot stick, or shoes that do not have a match, or clothes they haven't worn for many, many years. Uh, the third factor that um, makes us suspect that someone may have this problem uh, is cluttered living space. The living spaces over many years become highly cluttered. and and the individuals cannot live uh, and use the spaces for which they were designed. So they can't uh, sleep on their beds, they can't eat at their dining tables, they can't use the toilets, uh, shower or bathe in their bathrooms. Um, and so the living spaces become really, really difficult for them to use. The final factor has to do with the distress and impairment these individuals experience. Um, many times they're living in highly uncomfortable uh, situations. Um, if they've been hoarding for many, many years, like individuals who are in their 60s and 70s and sometimes 80s have, the homes are often very dilapidated, so they are lacking power and heat. Our, um, they, uh, the floorboards may sag under the, the weight of um, tons of wet newspaper. And they can be highly isolated um, and have very few uh, contacts throughout the, the day and the week. Harm reduction is a set of practical strategies that has the goal of managing uh, the hoarding behaviors to minimize risk and enhance comfort for the individuals in their homes so long as they continue to hoard uh, and engage in hoarding behavior. This differs from treatment where the focus or goal of treatment is really to stop the hoarding behaviors. In harm reduction, what we're really focusing on is managing risk, so long as the person continues to engage in the behavior. Now, when thinking about harm reduction, uh, harm reduction may be useful for a number of reasons. One is that uh, many of the individuals with this problem have low insight, meaning that they seldom actually accept help, uh, or often refuse help, and certainly refuse treatment. Um, and so offering treatment to them often closes the door. Another uh, reason that harm reduction may be helpful, as opposed to treatment certainly, is that these individuals, even though they're refusing help, they are often at very, very high risk. They often are living in highly dilapidated and unsafe situations. Um, the living spaces are so cluttered that um, their ability to exit their home or apartment in case of an emergency, like a fire or earthquake, is really difficult. And in fact, in some situations, even an emer emergency medical technician getting into the space would be very difficult. And so they are at significant risk. And also, many times, they're very uncomfortable. As I mentioned earlier, they may live without power or heat uh, for many weeks, months, and sometimes indefinitely. Or they may try to accommodate that, and they may try to heat their space with, with uh, gasoline or electric space heaters, which, uh, among all the clutter of paper, can be highly risky. Um, another f uh, reason that uh, harm reduction is worth considering is that it's not just the person with the problem who is at risk. If family members are living in that same home, they uh, experience the same risk as the person with the problem. And in addition, communities are at risk. Um, many times these homes or apartments are in urban settings where um, if an apartment um, uh, has a fire, it could affect um, many people within the complex or in the neighborhood. Also, these sites are prone to rat and, insects and insect infestations that affect communities as well as uh, odors. So it can be uh, a community problem and have community risks as well. And the last uh, reason that we may want to consider harm reduction is oftentimes 
with, with these individuals, over-focusing on treatment actually makes things worse. Um, when you, you know, insist on treatment for an individual who's refusing help because either they are too fearful or have low insight, they can create uh, resentment and mistrust and actually close the door to other interventions that may be helpful.